The Cassini spacecraft was in the Saturn system for more than 10 years, and it was a remarkable mission. It also marked the beginning of a generation of scientific careers and the lives of scientists who spent more than 10 years sifting through the gigabytes of data to comprehend the gas giant, its rings and its moons. In addition to discovering features that resemble popular culture icons and providing a glimpse beneath Titan's atmosphere, Cassini also provided new information about the potential habitability of icy moons. This was made possible partly by the successful landing of a probe on the orange moon. Even the most amazing image of the UFO object, which was orbiting deep within Saturn's rings, was acquired by the mission. What important details about Saturn did Cassini reveal? Let's find out. Number 1. Huygens showed us Titan, a possibly primordial Earth-like world. Voyager captured photographs of Saturn's largest moon, Titan, shrouded in a thick yellow haze as it orbited the Saturn system. Titan may resemble an early Earth since Voyager's infrared spectrometers discovered a nitrogen-rich atmosphere dotted with hydrocarbons and organic compounds presumed to be living precursors. The Huygens probe, which travelled to Titan on the back of Cassini, was created by the European Space Agency to do additional research. The saucer-shaped object blasted off Cassini on December the 24th and sped toward Titan. A few weeks later, on January the 14th, 2005, Huygens descended to Titan's surface via parachute. Huygens took the first in-situ measurements of Titan's atmosphere during the two-and-a-half-hour trip and transmitted the first images of the Moon's surface to Earth. Since 2005, Cassini has passed Titan more than 100 times. While some flybys were intended to sample Titan's upper atmosphere and analyze its surface features, others gave Cassini a chance to see Titan's clouds and learn more about its environment. The flybys demonstrated that Titan is more intricate than anyone could have dreamed. According to Cassini Huygens, Titan's atmosphere contains complex ions that are heavy, carbon and hydrogen rich and are assumed to be the beginnings of life. Titan's surface is covered in electrified hydrocarbon sand dunes, which allude to a wind-whipped atmosphere. Methane rain from storm clouds has the potential to cut river channels through the frozen ground. The liquid methane and ethane lakes that have formed throughout the North Pole may also be aided by this rain. According to scientists, the methane cycle in liquid form is similar to the water cycle on Earth. Although Huygens and Cassini shed light on Titan, there are still a ton of unanswered questions. How do complex molecules develop in the atmosphere? Is the only source of liquid hydrocarbons for lakes and oceans rain, or may there be a subsurface reservoir? Could Titan provide a glimpse into the past of our own planet? Number 2. Watching Saturn's rings evolve In a small telescope, Saturn's rings appear static, but up close they are continually shifting seas of particles and tiny boulders. Particularly, the outermost ring, the F ring, undergoes rapid alteration. These characteristics, discovered there by the Voyager probes in 1980 and 1981, vanished by the time Cassini started investigating the system in 2004. One of the most active rings ever seen is the F-ring. Cassini saw evidence of meteorite collisions, small bodies that come from outside Saturn's solar system in Saturn's rings. Despite being far away in the solar system, an examination of those encounters suggested that Earth and Saturn both experienced meteoroid strikes at the same rate. The consequences of these tiny bodies colliding with the rings are captured in a series of breathtaking images that were published in 2013. The researchers were able to date a 12,000-mile wave back a generation to 1983 using models that the scientists were able to create. The Cassini spacecraft started a series of maneuvers in April 2017 that allowed it to close in on Saturn and the planet's innermost rings. This allowed the probe to get a close-up view of some of the vertical structures and propellers of the rings, disturbances in the rings. The science from those observations is still coming in, but the data will undoubtedly provide insights into how the rings vary over time. Number 3. 
Cassini unlocked mysteries of Saturn's hexagon. The six-sided North Polar jet stream, known simply as the Hexagon, is one of Saturn's features that intrigues atmospheric aficionados. In the 1980s, Voyager's photos gave some indication of the structure, but Cassini finally provided definitive proof of it. The Hexagon is 25,000 kilometers long and may reach 100 kilometers into the planet's atmosphere, according to thermal imaging. Similar to the river of winds whirling around the latitudes of Earth, the hexagon is a polar jet stream of winds. The jet stream on Earth is different because land masses and oceans pull it in different directions, causing it to dip and jitter. In contrast, the polar jet stream in an atmosphere devoid of land and seas would look like Saturn's hexagon. It is still unknown why the jet stream has six sides rather than five or eight. Number four, Cassini showed us one of Saturn's huge, infrequent storms. The alterations in storms and characteristics of our solar system's massive planets excite scientists. For instance, the Great Red Spot on Jupiter may have been around for at least 400 years. However, the storm has also been diminishing for decades, and no one understands why. After the Voyager 2 flyby of Neptune in 1989, storms began to appear and disappear. On Saturn, there are occasionally little thunderstorms, but large storms only happen roughly once every 30 years. Due to Cassini's extended orbit of the planet, researchers were able to observe one of these enormous worldwide storms from beginning to end. When Voyager passed Saturn, it detected lightning, but scientists weren't sure where the signal of lightning came from. Some even hypothesized that it may have come from the rings. However, as the planet turned, Cassini's detectors revealed storms rising and setting across the horizon, demonstrating that the lightning originated from Saturn's atmosphere. After that, in 2010, a big white area appeared indicating a storm. The storm was nearly the size of the Earth, measuring 10,000 kilometers across. This storm was carried by the globe's rotation until it spread out into a zone that spanned 15,000 kilometers from north to south. The storm continued to circle Saturn like a ribbon during the ensuing months as it revolved, covering 5 billion square kilometers until one day the storm's head and tail collided and destroyed one another. The storm's activity eventually stopped after barely one week. Scientists are still unsure of the cause of the storm's quick conclusion. Number 5. Cassini showed us Saturn's other dynamic moons. According to NASA, Saturn has 53 confirmed and 8 preliminary unconfirmed moons, excluding its ice and rock-filled rings. The astounding thing is that there were just 18 moons known to exist near Saturn when the expedition started in 1997. 13 additional were found by Earth-based observatories, even as Cassini was traveling. Since Cassini's launch, observations from both Earth and space have assisted in the discovery of more moons. The spacecraft discovered the tiny moons Methone and Palene shortly after it arrived in July 2004. These discoveries were followed by the discovery of moons like Polydeuces, Daphnis and Aegeon. When it comes to habitability, Enceladus and Titan attract scientists' attention, but Saturn's other moons also hold many secrets. For instance, Tethys, which orbits within Saturn's E-ring, has lengthy, enigmatic red stripes on its surface. They are unlike anything else in the solar system that has been observed. Since it's not easy to alter the course of the spacecraft for more flybys, Cassini's discovery of the stripes was made too late in the mission to allow for closer investigation. The stripe seeming youth is the most enigmatic feature. By counting craters and determining the relative age of the structures by what is covering or beneath a crater, researchers can determine the ages of planetary surface features. But as a sign of youth, these stripes pass over the craters and surrounding terrain. The stripes don't appear to have been damaged or worn by anything. It genuinely appears as though someone recently drew on the surface using a crayon. Then there are the Tutu moons of Saturn, Enchilada moons, Walnut moons, or Ravioli moons, depending on whom you ask. Number 6. The tiny flying saucer orbiting deep within Saturn's rings. 
New high-resolution RAW photographs from the mission team of the tiny moon Pan, which carved its own course in Saturn's A-ring, went viral on social media. The 21-mile-wide Pan is a shepherd moon named for the flute-playing Greek deity of wilderness. The furthest loop of frozen particles from Saturn's surface is the A-ring, where it resides in a gap. Pan, a tiny Roomba with a force field, continuously removes trash from the gap as it zips around Saturn by sucking up some ring fragments and kicking others away. In fact, it was this lack of ring debris that inspired researchers to hypothesize Pan's existence as early as the middle of the 1980s. But it wasn't until 1990 that Mark Showalter and his team carefully examined the photographs returned by the Voyager 2 probe that they spotted the small moon, which is what caused the gap to exist. The Cassini spacecraft had the opportunity to observe Pan up close as it raced through the Saturnian system. The moon is wrapped with what is known as an equatorial accretion disk, or a smooth, thin layer of ring particles that have been cemented onto Pan's waistline by the moon's weak gravity, as shown in detail in these more recent photographs. Pan isn't the only tiny moon with a peculiar shape. Atlas also has a peculiar shape for similar reasons. Even tiny Dione, which is only half as big as our moon, might have an internal ocean. Similar magnetic signals to those from Enceladus, which suggested the presence of its plumes, have been found by Cassini's instruments. However, Dione's successive flybys have shown nothing. Number 7. Figuring out why Lapidus looks so weird Scientists were perplexed by Lapidus's two-toned look for a very long time. The extent of the contrast between the moon's light and dark sides may be seen in this false color photograph. On Lapidus, there doesn't seem to be any gray or a combination of light and dark stuff. Early lunar measurements made in 2007 indicated that dust and sunlight were the likely causes of the change. In 2009, when researchers discovered a ring of debris trailing the nearby moon Phoebe, that notion advanced even further. In a nutshell, the idea contends that as Lapidus passes through Phoebe's debris ring, the F-ring, its tidally locked nature ensures that one side will constantly face the incoming debris and become covered. Compared to Lapidus's normal surface, which is brighter, these dark particles absorb more sunlight. The ice melts away as the sunlight reaches the shadowed areas. Once in the nearby cold area, water vapor from the melting zone freezes in the brighter areas, increasing their brightness. Number 8. Pac-Man on Tethys and Mimas It seems that astronomers enjoy leveraging popular culture to revitalize the Saturnian moons in the public's imagination. The name they gave Mimas, Death Star, was likely chosen due to its enormous crater, Herschel, which reminded them of the notorious Star Wars weapon. And in yet another startling illustration of this pattern, it turns out that Mimas and Tethys share traits with Pac-Man, the popular video game character from the 1980s. A heat signature found on both moons has the V-shaped Pac-gaping man's mouth cut out of a featureless spherical head. The two satellites are tidally locked, which means that one side always faces Saturn. According to NASA, scientists believe that the shape results from high-speed electrons slamming onto the top side of each moon's surface, turning the soft terrain into hard-packed ice that is less prone to cooling off at night or heating up during the day than fluffier terrain. The hard-packed ice is visible in the infrared photographs. The remainder of the ground warms up more quickly during the day to produce the Pac-Man silhouette. Number 9. Cassini dazzled scientists with Saturn's color-changing atmosphere The northern hemisphere of Saturn had just emerged from a winter that had lasted seven Earth years when Cassini arrived there. When they arrived, researchers discovered a clear blue atmosphere as opposed to the yellowy beige they were used to from ground-based measurements. The blue gave off an air of cleanliness. The cause was quickly identified by scientists. This blue was a clue of a clean environment. Methane, which absorbs red light and hydrogen and helium, which scatter blue light, make up the majority of Saturn's upper atmospheric layers. As a result, light that reflects off the atmosphere has a bluer color. 
Then, as the northern hemisphere of Saturn reached its height of summer, Cassini noticed a change in color to yellow. Methane is broken down by sunlight, and the resulting fragments create long chains of hydrocarbons that act as particles. Light is then scattered by these particles, moving them toward the red end of the spectrum. Saturn's yellow haze is a result of chemical processes that are comparable to those that cause smog to form on Earth. Furthermore, Saturn's hexagonal polar jet stream is frequently still blue after the surrounding atmosphere has turned yellow. This is due in part to the fact that it receives less sunlight than lower latitudes, and in part to the fact that the jet stream's sides prevent mixing from lower latitudes. Number 10. Finding an ingredient of plastic In Titan's atmosphere, polypropylene, a component of plastic, was found by researchers in 2013. It is utilized all across the planet Earth, from plastic containers to car bumpers. Although it can appear organic in nature, people often create it artificially via processes like oil refining. Three carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms make up the hydrocarbon polypropylene, which is used in many products. In Titan's atmosphere, the Voyager probes did not find propylene. Still, they did find molecules belonging to the same chemical family, those with three carbon atoms but four or eight hydrogen atoms, respectively. The middle child in the family looked missing, perplexing the researchers. Titan's frigid surface is too cold for liquid water to exist. Still, it is nonetheless an intriguing place to visit. It resembles rocky planets like Earth in appearance, but its base chemical is quite different. Contrary to sand grains on Earth, which are silicates, its lakes and rivers are made of methane and ethane, and the wind-swept dunes on its surface are built of hydrocarbon grains. If Titan has the elements to produce a variant of life as we know it, Researchers are curious to find out. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.